Yes, yes, we all know. Leather armor is fiction. It's just a creation of Hollywood and video games. Or is it? It is true that the leather armor depicted in movies and video games often would not work as armor. I really shouldn't even count as armor. Sometimes it's little more than a jacket and sometimes it's less than that. But just because that armor depicted in movies and in video games is so atrocious does not mean that leather armor never existed or that leather cannot be used as armor. I'm not talking about it's just material to hold together parts of armor, as with brigantines, which sometimes have leather bodies to hold the metal plates together, but actual leather armor. And these can take back pretty far. One example is the armor found in the tomb of King Tut, which was a leather scale cuirass consisting of layers of leather in s to make scales with a linen padding behind it and a leather backing to that linen. This is that set. It may not have been used in combat as most of the things in King Tut's tomb were made for his tomb and had little use, but many things do represent things he would have had in life. So his actual armor he may have used may have been like this. Or the armor like this could have been used by Egyptian soldiers. There are also accounts that I've heard in more books of Hittites using leather armor around the same time period. And later on, once you get to the Scythians, there are actual finds of Scythian leather armor, like this amazingly pristine suit of leather armor. Scale armor made of thick, tough scales that can effectively resist weapon strikes, as it was actually used, and there's evidence that it was. Later on, there are other accounts of leather armor. I've heard historians debate whether or not some Greek cuirasses might have been made out of le leather layered with linen, though I do have not found any finds of such an armor. But past that, we do know the Byzantines used some leather armor as horse armor, as there's this find of Byzantine horse neck armor made out of thick leather scales that was used in combat. And a similar armor like this could have worked for infantry soldiers or cavalry, though by this period metal armor would have been easily available. But previously, this might have been more available. And there are other examples, like leather armor from China, like this example. And also later, during the time of the Mongolian conquest of Pax of Mongolia, there was leather armor, like these examples, which was actually used in combat. So clearly this worked for them, though they also used steel armor as well. Many of these leather armors are scale or lamellar armors, which with that process it gives overlapping ability and fixes the problem of how do you repair leather armor when it gets a cut or a nick in it. Well, simply with scale or lamellar, you replace that scale or that lame with a new one. And even a small cut can be fixed with some strong glue which will make it hard. It won't be as good as brand new, but it will work pretty well. And going on to how glue can help reinforce it, or even repair, there are examples of glue hardened leather armor. Going much later to the Native American peoples on the west coast of what now is the US, there are examples of glue hardened leather jerkins that were used as armor. So a similar thing might be used by other cultures around the world in more ancient times.
Other accounts of leather armor, if we go in American ones, are the Huron people are kind of using leather armor, like depicted in this drawing, which is a scale of leather armor. And then also, if we go to the people in si living in Siberia, they often use leather armor because it's the scale of lamellar with either hoop like construction armor added to it, or a big sheet shield like thing that will go over the upper torso. All of these would be a thick, hardened, boiled leather or hide, or layered boiled or hardened leather that's layered and this together. As you can layer multiple thin layers together and make a much stronger material with it. There are also many more examples of leather armor. There are few accounts from the Middle Ages of people wearing leather jerkins in battle. Now, whether these were for decoration, for some maybe rain resistance to keep off their armor, or as actual armor, we do not know. But there are examples of a few leather bracers and other things that do not appear to be for archers as they are open in the, f in the inner arm but cover only the outer arm and they do not appear to have had plates attached to them at any time. So these are not very solid evidence as if this was very common. Going to other cultures, in Japan there are examples of leather armor. Some of these appear rather ornate and more of as decorative armor like this one, but others seem more practical and seem like they would have actually worked in battle and are made of quite thick sturdy leather. Also in Tibet there are examples of leather scale and lamla armor like these. Later on in time, going to 17th and 18th century, there from Europe there is such a thing as a buff coat which is a thick rawhide or leather coat which is worn usually under a breastplate but would work as armor for the arms providing protection from glancing cuts and even some direct cuts to the arm as it was pretty stiff and rigid and thick. These are all examples of actual leather armor that was used. It is true that in the Middle Ages it would not have been a prevalent thing, communications. And even during the Roman time, probably not prevalent. But before that, it could have been much more prevalent, just the examples have not survived well due to the fragile nature of leather, as many things can break it down easily. The weather, microorganisms break it down, or even larger organisms just eat it as a food source if needed. But leather can work as armor and even for some cultures it might be more preferable than metal armor. For like a pastoral civilization leather could be a rather plentiful commodity that they can make use of for armor if they need it to. Also, for a hunter-gatherer civilization, or more than now often referred to as a forager civilization, leather would be more plentiful than metal, as all the as the honey they do would bring hides back, but mining would be difficult for them. So that would be another reason to use leather armor. So it was a thing. Now the question is, how plentiful was it? But beyond that, if we go into the fictional setting and often made these leather armors are depicted in video games, leather armor, if done right, might make some sense in a fantasy land, as the plentifulness of large, hard-skinned beasts in fantasy lands is often very prevalent. So there's high could be often used as to construct armor as one comment on it, one of Scalagram's videos about leather armor mentioned. But this is more of the, about the historicalness of leather armor, not how it could be in a fictional realm. 
So as we can see, leather armor did exist, just not in that thin jacket-like stuff depicted by Hollywood and video games often. Though there are a few good examples from video games, but they're few and far between.